In this episode, we take a look at the Motu M2 USB audio interface. This entire episode is recorded with the Motu M2 and my Earthworks SR314 microphone, which you see right here. This review really comes from my perspective, which is from the post sound for video perspective or live streaming perspective. If you're a musician and you're looking for a review on the M2, I don't know how useful you're gonna find mine. Let's run through the features and some of my impressions. Number one, this is a USB 2.0 audio interface. It has a USB-C connector on the back. Technically it's a USB 2.0 connection that it's making there. And it comes with a USB-C to USB-A cable. It is powered by the bus. That is to say that whatever computer you plug it into, will power the audio interface. The M2 supports sample rates between 44.1 kilohertz all the way up to 192 kilohertz, and it can record up to 32-bit float directly to your computer. Now, I wanna be really clear on this. This is not the same as some of the new field recorders that do wide dynamic range recording like the Sound Devices Mix Pre 2 series or the Zoom F6. Those actually have multiple analog to digital converters. These just have a single analog to digital converter. So they're not doing super wide dynamic range recording. The M2 got its name because it has two microphone line level or instrument level inputs. It is a combination XLR, quarter inch jack, and you can apply phantom power independently to each input. When you're using it as a microphone input, it can supply up to 60 dB of gain. What does that mean if you're using something like a Shure SM7B? Now, here's a sample talking into the Shure SM7B. That's going into the Motu M2 and I have the input gain on the Motu M2 set to max. So that's plus 60 dB, and this is what it sounds like. So let me give you a few moments of silence so you can hear what my room sounds like, or maybe the noise that the microphone makes. Now this is a condenser microphone. It's not gonna have any problems with any sort of condenser microphones. In fact, right now we're doing the recording. I have the gain set with the knob at about 1.30 or two o'clock on the dial. I'm gonna guess that's somewhere around 45 dB gain max, maybe closer to 40. On the back, it does have two balanced quarter inch TRS outputs. It also has two unbalanced RCA outputs and it does on the front have a quarter inch headphone output. And of course you can run all of them at the same time. So that means you can run near field monitors that are powered. For example, in my case, we're using some Focal Solo 6 Brilliums and it drives them beautifully. I've been using it for the last two and a half weeks or so. And the sound quality that's coming out of these is fantastic. It's very much like using my Apollo X6. I don't really, I can't tell a difference. So those outputs are really quite high quality. The headphone jack is great as well. The headphone amplifier seems very good. I was able to drive my Sennheiser HD 820s that are rated at 300 ohms and it's able to drive them without any problems at all. And I didn't even come close to maxing out the volume available on the headphone amp. So they seem to have done a really good job on the headphone amp as well. Overall, the build quality is pretty good. It has a mostly metal design. The knobs have a metal feel to them, I think. Maybe the knobs are plastic, not 100% sure on that. But the nice thing too is it does have a screen with proper meters, which is really kind of a refreshing thing for a sub $200 audio interface. A lot of times that's where you'll see those audio interfaces really kind of skimp. And setting gain, you really have to rely on your computer and the DAW or digital audio workstation or whatever app you're using to really gain up appropriately. This actually has meters, which are actually somewhat useful. Now, not only is it input meters, but it also has output meters as well. So you can meter the output coming from your computer. For the nerdy nerds out there, this does have a 3000 ohm input impedance on the mic inputs. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Generally, I could say this, you're not gonna have problems with most modern microphones. It's gonna be just great. By most, I mean probably 99.9%. .9%. The M2 also includes Performer Lite, Ableton Live 10 Lite, and six gigabytes of loops and audio samples. Again, that's gonna be mainly for the music world, but it's there if you like it. In terms of overall self noise on the microphone inputs, it is specced at minus 129 dBU EIN. So what that means is that's actually really, really good. Some of the highest quality preamplifiers you can use on the market today are spec'd right around there. So really, really good. 
In practical terms, what we did is we actually plugged in a dummy XLR connector. This has a 150 ohm resistor across pins two and three. So what this does in practical terms is this simulates a dynamic microphone in terms of the load impedance, but it doesn't supply any sort of audio signal. So it's a way to plug this into one of the preamps, crank the gain all the way to max, and then you can see what kind of self noise those preamps are generating. And in our case, that measured in at minus 78 dB RMS max when we had the preamp set to 100% using our Dymi XLR connector. In practical terms, what does that mean? Self noise is not a problem on these preamps. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. Your microphone, 99.9% .9 guaranteed, is gonna generate more self noise than these preamps are, so you're good. One other thing that Motu did that's kind of unique here is that they have written their own drivers for both Windows and Mac. And of course, in the case of Windows, you, you need the driver. But on the case of Mac, it's an optional thing. You can actually just plug it in and use Core Audio without a problem. But if you use the custom driver from Motu, it actually is super low latency, as low as 2.5 milliseconds round trip, in fact, depending on the buffer size that you use. But in our case, we found the latency is not an issue. You're not gonna get a lot of that kind of echoey effect and it just works really, really well. So they did a really good job on that front as well. Now, how does that matter for video and live streaming? For video, at least, post work, if you're going to be recording automated dialogue replacement, ADR, and you wanna be able to play back the original sound at the same time that your actor is redoing their lines, this is gonna be really good for that because, again, very low latency is gonna make it so that they can actually talk along with their existing lines and get them pretty much right in sync. Now, here's an example of setting up the loopback feature. So what I could do here, for example, if I was recording a podcast, I could set up my digital audio workstation. Here we're using Adobe Audition. On my first track, I have it set up so that the input is coming from the first input on the M2. And you can see as I talk here, the meter bounces around. And then for track number two, I've selected as the input, the stereo loopback. So that's going to record anything that the computer plays back. Now you'll notice that we have it muted here so that we don't get a feedback loop. <laughs> so any audio that we do play will get recorded to this track, but it won't play back in my monitoring. So that's important to do. Now, let's go ahead and play the music here. The M2 comes with a two-year warranty, which is good, and it runs $180 US at the time of this review. Now, no product is perfect, so let's talk a little bit about some of the things that I wasn't super thrilled with. Number one, the included USB-C to USB-A cable is pretty short. So <laughs> if there's any sort of distance between your computer and the audio interface, you're probably gonna need your own cable that's a little bit longer. The smaller knobs on the M2, the gain knobs and the headphone volume knob, all had a little bit of flex in them, a little bit more than I'd like to see. Again, if you're careful with it, I don't foresee that as being any sort of problem, but just something to be aware of. There's no sort of mute on the inputs or on the overall outputs. So if you do need to mute it, you just basically have to turn it all the way down, which is a little bit of a pain, but again, we're talking about a budget audio interface, so I'm not terribly surprised that there's no mute. And then finally on the meters, well, I'm really glad that they have meters because a lot of audio interfaces in this price range don't, they're not the most useful meters in the world. And what I mean by that is it'd be really nice if they had some sort of markings on them so you knew when the bar was this big, what that meant. <laughs> it is somewhat colored, but what I notice is that as soon as you get into the yellow range in my DAW, we're getting really, really close to clipping. So even the colors aren't super helpful. Again, it'd be nice if there were markings on there to identify different targets, like maybe a minus 12 dB full scale. So overall, there's a look at the Motu M2. I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.